Firefly's been shopping for Virgin Orbit's assets, Rocket Lab's hypersonic test bed has carried its first mission, and the last Ariane 5's got a technical problem. For one last time, this is Tomorrow Space News. I'm kicking off the show with a map, more specifically a Starlink coverage map, as Trinidad and Tobago has joined the space-based internet service provider. It's joined a handful of other countries in the Caribbean which currently accept the service, with Starlink.com's official map saying that the rest of the islands in the region will have Starlink connectivity available next year. Over to Starship and the testing campaign for the second integrated flight test featuring Ship 25 and Booster 9 is nearly in full swing. However, it appears S25 is needing a little bit of encouragement. After attempting a spin prime on Wednesday, nothing actually happened and the frost lines promptly fell back down. Virgin Orbit's bankruptcy has been playing out over the last few weeks very much in the public eye. Strato Launch got Cosmic Girl, Rocket Lab got a Long Beach facility, and Vast got the Mojave facility. But one big item remained unsold. All of the stuff inside of the buildings. Well, we have the answer. Firefly Aerospace have agreed to buy the remaining inventory, which is comprised of mostly bits of rockets, such as engines and other components for Launcher 1, left behind in Long Beach and Mojave. Some assets, such as angle grinders, drills, and even the Launcher 1 rocket sled, are currently available to bid on online, all starting at just five US dollars. The deal for Firefly was a total of $3.8 million, which they're going to have to figure out what to do with. They already have their own program with the Alpha SmallSat launcher, they're working with Northrop Grumman on the medium launch vehicle, and they have the Blue Ghost Lunar Lander, and they have the Space Utility Vehicle. So where on earth will odd bits of Launcher 1 come in? Only time will tell. We had an Electron launch at the weekend, but as we're not in space traffic yet, you can probably tell that it wasn't orbital. We also haven't got any video, only two photos, which this is one of. The launch was in fact the first flight of the new hypersonic accelerated suborbital test Electron, a suborbital version of the normal orbital Electron vehicle used for hypersonic testing. For this flight, called Dynamo A, a classified payload was inside of the payload fairing, which helps to explain why the media coverage of this flight was essentially zero. The lack of openness is still confusing though. The National Reconnaissance Office, for example, still allows broadcasting and announcements ahead of time with their launches. We have at least seen some reaction on Twitter, with CEO Peter Beck confirming that the flight was 100% successful. Ariane 5, Europe's heavy lift workhorse, was meant to be putting its feet up in the retirement home this weekend. However, due to a risk to the redundancy of a, quote, critical function, the launch has been postponed. The final two payloads which Ariane 5 will ever carry into the sky, Heinrich Hertz Satellite and Syracuse B, are both safe inside of the final assembly building awaiting the rollout of the full stack. No new launch date has been announced just yet, and it is in everyone's interest to take it slow and steady, even if it is the type's final flight. The Ariane 5, over its nearly three decades of service, has become THE rocket that is reliable enough and precise enough to launch the world's most valuable scientific missions, such as Bepi Colombo, JUICE, Rosetta, the Herschel Space Observatory, the Planck Space Observatory, and most famously, the James Webb Space Telescope, just to name a few. Out of 116 launches, only two were completely unsuccessful, one of them famously being the type's first ever flight, V-88. Ariane 5 also launched Europe's first spacecraft, the Automated Transfer Vehicle, to the International Space Station. This vehicle is one which will always be remembered in the history books. The next vehicle in the family tree, Ariane 6, really needs to start getting a jiggle on. The current prediction is the first part of next year, and it needs to be if ESA and Ariane Space want a transition which is as smooth as possible. We've had an incredible recovery record set this week, but first, thank you to the citizens of tomorrow for your continued support over the weeks and months, even when there's been a dip in shows. Every month, the Ground Support, Suborbital, Orbital, Escape Velocity and Plaid Pro Plus citizens get access to a myriad of perks, such as seeing space news scripts as they're being written, access to our member-only live hangouts, seeing us organise the shows in the Escape Velocity Discord channel, and much more. To join, head to join.tmro.tv or head to the Join button below. On Monday at 2135 UTC, we saw this Falcon 9 depart from Slick Fall East at the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, carrying 72 different payloads for the Transporter 8 rideshare mission. As you might imagine, there were multiple different customers with a variety of different buses, including the first Rocket Lab Photon launched on a vehicle that isn't operated by Rocket Lab themselves. 
following a coast up to their sun synchronous orbit, all the payloads were deployed successfully. As for the first stage, number B1071, it successfully concluded its ninth flight by touching down on landing zone 4, which also marked the 200th recovery of an orbital class booster. That's the number which surpasses the most reliable vehicle's launch count because only the space shuttle also had a landing count. China was flying again on Thursday with 41 Zhilin 1 commercial LEO observation satellites launching atop this Long March 2D from Launch Complex 9 at the Tai'an Satellite Launch Center at half past five universal. The Type's fourth launch of the year was a success with all of the payloads also ending up in a sun synchronous orbit. And we're ending up space traffic with another Falcon 9, but surprisingly, it isn't a Starlink mission. The Indonesian KA band high throughput communication satellite Satria was launched from Space Launch Complex 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 2204 UTC on Sunday. The 4.5 metric ton payload was successfully sent on its way to its geostationary transfer orbit, whilst B1067, the reason supporting this mission, concluded its 12th flight on the drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. We've got four flights to come over the next seven days, the first being an unknown payload on a Long March 6. That'll be followed by the penultimate ever flight of not only the Delta IV Heavy, but also the entire Delta family, and we'll be rounding out the week with back-to-back -back Starlinks, one from Vandenberg on Thursday and another from Florida on Friday. And that's it. This chapter of Tomorrow's Space News comes to an end. You'll still see me every Friday on the live show and my face will not be disappearing from the internet, but at least for this show, my time has come to an end. So whether this is your first time watching or you've been watching me since the start, thanks for watching and goodbye.